What is up everyone and welcome to the fifth tutorial in our Learn C++ course. This will be on variables and is part one of two just because there is quite a lot to take in with regards to variables and I don't want to overwhelm you with everything all at once. So in part one we're going to focus on what are variables. Then we'll talk about some of the basic variable types in C++. These will be in the slides. And then we'll turn to the code and focus on assigning and reassigning variables with some examples. So for starters, what are variables? Variables are simply a way to store and modify data within a program. Pretty much every program will need some kind of variables to help maintain its state throughout its execution. Variables can be used temporarily or can exist throughout the entire program's execution. Take for example a game. Often they'll ask what your name is right at the beginning and then they'll store it somewhere. Well that name will exist throughout the entire time that you're playing the, pro, uh, playing the game and also in future runs as well. However, if we're entering, let's say a specific level, there may be a lot of variables that help set up the level that are basically destroyed as soon as we leave the level or go into a different one. Now each variable uses a type to dictate the kind of data that can be stored. So there might be, let's say, numerical types of variables, or there may, might be text-based variables or true or false variables. These are all determined with the type which we have to assign. Creating a variable can be broken down into two stages, declaration and initialization. Declaration is essentially assigning a type and a name to a variable, and then initialization is storing a value in that variable. So some of the types in C++, for starters, C++ is statically typed. So statically typed means once we assign a type to a variable, that type can never change. If we create, let's say, a numerical variable, we cannot then later store a true or false value in it. Now this is unlike languages like Python, which are considered dynamically typed. Those definitely allow you to modify types of variables, but C++ is a bit more rigid that way. So some of the basic types we might encounter will be booleans, which are true or false values, integers, which are positive or negative whole numbers, floats and doubles, which are decimal numbers, characters, which are single byte characters, and then there are null pointers and void types. Now, null pointers and voids are a little bit more advanced, so I doubt we'll actually cover those so much in this course, but I just wanted to include them here um, just in case some of you say, well, there are actually other types and it didn't include them. Okay, so um, I think we'll focus on bools, ints, floats. We might take a look at some doubles, but we'll kind of skip over those for the most part because they're actually quite similar to floats. And the characters and strings we'll actually cover in the next tutorial. So let's head on over to the code and go over some examples. Okay, so as you can see, I've kind of cleared out my main file and put everything in old code, and I'll continue to do that as we go. All right. So the first stage is going to be talk about how to declare and initialize variables. So the two stages are going to be assigning a type and a name. Okay. So that will be the declaration and then initialization will be name equals some value. Okay. And we can do this in two steps or we can do it in one like this. So let's focus on Boolean variables because they're the simplest. The type is going to be a bool. Okay. The name is going to be whatever we want. So let's think about something game related. So maybe something like is game over. Okay, and then we can leave it at that. We can then assign it a value, so is game over is equal to false because maybe the game is still running. Okay, so a boolean is perfect for this kind of a variable because a game is either over or it's not over. So even if it's paused, that doesn't mean the game is over, it's, it's technically still running, so it's either true or false. There's only one of two possible states. Okay, so we can put this all in one go if we want so by saying bool is game over is equal to false. doesn't really matter too, too much. So we're actually going to break it up. Okay, if later on we decide that, okay, the game is over, we died, or maybe we just won, then we're just going to say is game over is equal to true. So this is assigning the value for the first time, and then this is reassigning it later on. We can also perform other operations. We could have another variable, such as bool is not game over. I know this doesn't really make too much sense, but just bear with me here. Um, and we can assign it the value of is game over. So basically this will say whatever value we find here, true, we're just going to copy that into here. Okay, so at this point in time they're equal, but then I could reassign it later. So I could say is game over is equal to, you know, false again. And then this one doesn't change. Okay, so just something to note there. 
We can also take Boolean values and assign them the value of some comparison operation. So for example, is game over is going to be equal to five greater than two. Now I know this really doesn't make much sense given our context, but this is a perfectly valid operation because five is greater than two, it stores the value of true. Okay, so again, just something to note there. This is just interesting semantics. Okay, so that's Booleans for you. They're very simple. Again, it's either true or false. There's not too much more to know there. So next up is going to be integers. So integers are whole numbers, can be positive or negative. And as you can see, there are a ton of variants. So we're not going to worry about any of these, like int 16, int 32. They're also like unsigned integers if you go all the way down. We're not going to worry about those. Um, we just don't really need that level of specificity. So we can kind of ignore that. So um, an int, let's say, uh, let's say current health. Okay, maybe is equal to 100. Okay, so again, we can split this into two parts. We could do this and say current health is equal to 100, or we can do it all in one go. Let's do it all in one go just for the sake of variety here. We can also take our integers and we can assign them the value of some operation too, but it shouldn't be a comparison operation because this returns true or false and doesn't return a number. But we could do something like current health is equal to 50 minus two, for example, and that's also perfectly valid. We'll talk about more about operators like this later on. For now, just know that it's totally possible to do so. Just like with Booleans, we can assign them a literal value like this, or we can assign them the value of some other variable. That's uh, entirely up to us what we want to do with them. Okay, so finally, we'll move to floats and doubles. Floats and doubles are both decimal numbers, but doubles offer double the precision of floats. That's how they get their name, interestingly enough. So if a float is a decimal number, then a double will potentially double the amount of decimal places it can hold. Like I said, I don't really use doubles very much because I just don't need that level of precision and they would take up a bit more memory. So as much as possible, we'll stick to floats. If we really, really need to be precise, then we can use doubles instead. But we'll do floats, let's say, um, maybe we'll do like percent health or something like that is going to be equal to 0 0.45 and that would be a perfectly valid thing. Just like with, well, I'll show you an example of doubles because why not? Let's say pi, for example, so three point one four one five nine. Probably shouldn't add extra decimal places if I don't need them. So that would be an example of a double or a float. Now I could totally use a float to represent this. Um, that's fine. Um, you'll note that if actually if I scroll over it, you can see that it's storing all of these values here, but this is uh, not going to store quite as many values in there. Um, all right, um, one final thing I should say is that we can't assign decimal numbers to integers, but we can assign whole numbers to doubles or floats, okay? So I could totally do five, and that's fine, okay? Just like I could do 5.0. It would be interpreted as 5.0, but if I did five, that would also be fine, okay? We should also be aware that if we are doing operations such as um, a whole number minus a decimal number, then we can't store that inside of an integer. We would have to use a float or do some kind of conversions to make sure that we're um, dealing with variables of the same type. We'll talk more about that when we get to operators and operations, but you know, just keep that in mind as we go. Okay, so that's it for now. We covered booleans, ints, and floats and doubles. When we come back, we'll talk quickly about characters and then move to strings. So thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. What's up guys, welcome to the sixth tutorial in our Learn C++ course. Here we'll cover part two of variables. There's only two types we really need to go over and those are going to be characters and strings in C++. So we'll just quickly talk about characters. These are simple text-based variables. They're used for single digit texts only and it's basically anything of length one between the single quote marks, okay? So it cannot be length zero, cannot be length two, three, four, etc. It has to be of length one. It's a great way to represent special characters such as new line or return characters. Um, otherwise, I personally don't really use them that much. Next up is gonna be strings. These are text-based variables. We've actually seen some examples of these already. These are used for texts, names, and messages throughout our code. And it's basically anything between these double quotes. Unlike uh, characters, they can be of length zero, one, two, three, four, etc. basically up until in an infinite length. Um, well, not quite because that would actually crash the program, but they can be very, very big, okay? So let's head on over to the code and take a look at some examples. 
Great, so once again, cleared everything out. So the first thing is going to be our characters. Now these are, aside from Booleans, the simplest, um, I guess, simplest type. But just because they take up the second least amount of memory. Integers by default take up 8 bits. Characters are 4. Booleans are um, actually just the 1. But again, that's kind of beyond the scope of the course. Okay, so first of all, we can create a character with char, um, or the char, okay? And we can call this whatever we want, so maybe let's call this character G, okay? Single quotes, and we'll just put the G there, and just like that, all right? So similarly, the characters can have, um, let's actually, I guess I can't call this character period. I can, I can do that, but I couldn't call it this, okay? Um, if I did a character period like that, that's also fine. And I can also have numbers as well. So I can do a character uh, one is equal to one like this. Okay. So there's no restriction as to what I can put in there. It just has to be of length one only. Like I said, I really don't find myself using characters very often because we have strings which are so much more powerful. So kind of why use a character instead of a string? Well, the only reason I can really think of is if we are using special characters that just don't really have a good string representation, which doesn't really happen very often. And if we just don't need something that has the functionality of a string, strings are actually considered arrays of characters. And in languages like C, which are very, very low level, um, even more low level than C++, there is no string type. We have to use arrays of characters. So it gets to be a bit hairy. Um, if you're coming from C, then probably you'll be very familiar with characters. If you're just starting on with C++ and you have strings, you really don't need to worry about characters so much. Okay, so next up is going to be strings. So if we didn't have the namespace standard, we would have to declare them as standard string. Okay, otherwise we can actually just say string. Okay, we'll give this a name. So let's do like a player name. And let's just put our name. So it needs to be between the double quotes here. Otherwise, it doesn't really matter what it is. We could do string empty. And we can have it like this. That's a perfectly valid string as well. Um, we could have a really long string. Uh, I'm not going to type out a really long string, but we could totally do that. Also, I should note, because strings are kind of considered arrays, there are a host of functions that come with strings. So we can do, let's say, empty dot, and then you'll see a list of all of these strings. So you can um, append a string onto the end of it. You can get the uh, beginning. You can clear it out to um, kind of get rid of all of the characters and just make it an empty string. You can copy it. You can empty it. You can erase it. Um, you can get the length or the max size, so on and so forth. Uh, you can get the, the pop out the last character, so get rid of that last character in the string. And there are a ton of functions. Just to kind of demonstrate one, um, I'm actually going to do the player name because it's a bit more interesting. We'll do player name, and we're going to do we're going to get the length of that. Okay, we can guess it like this. And let's say I want to output it. What I could do is I could just say actually uh, c out. Okay, and then just player name dot length like that. Okay, good stuff. Oh, and actually I have those facing the wrong way. Okay, cool. So if I give this a save and I give it a run, uh, you can see I get six. And that makes sense because Nimish has six characters. Okay, so feel free to play around with those functions a little bit. Again, uh, the best way to learn how to code is to try stuff yourself and practice. So try out some of these other functions, okay? And just note that some of them will take in arguments. So for example, if I want to append some other string onto the end of it, okay, and then I wanted to print that out, um, I would have to do something like this and then say C out uh, player name, if I can actually spell it properly. Okay. And you should see like a bunch of uh, characters on the end of it. So some of these arguments, or some of these functions rather take in arguments like this, and some of them don't need arguments. So for example, if you're just guessing the uh, side or the length, then it doesn't matter. Okay, so once you're done playing around with those, we'll come back and we'll focus on pointers. Now pointers get a little bit more complex, so make sure you're super comfortable with all of these types that we've discussed before moving on to the next section. All right, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.